Hey guys and welcome back. My name is Elisa and on this channel there's all sorts of fun stuff going on. I love to talk about different style archetypes, different styling aesthetics, and I throw in little pieces here and there of my own style journey. And I am really excited for today's video. I'm going to be doing a deep dive into the history of the body and style archetypes. Now if you've been around the style world and you've heard terms like dramatic, classic, natural, gamine, and romantic and you have no idea what they are or you have a little bit of an idea but you're just not sure where they came from that is exactly what I'm going to be addressing in this video today now there's a whole history around these terms dramatic classic natural romantic and gamine these are style archetypes that stem from the principle of the ancient Chinese yin and yang and I'm going to be breaking it all down today it's going to be a little style archetype history exploration if you will so this is going to be a a little bit of a longer video so let's not waste any time and dive straight in so there's been a few different people that have played an integral role in the development of the body and style archetypes which are based on the yin yang principle now if you've never heard of this it's essentially the idea that yin and yang can be identified in anything including ourselves both with our physical and non-physical attributes. Now, the idea is once you discover your yin-yang attributes, you can start to style yourself in a way that's native, or in other words, that's most complementary and harmonious, which results in a very authentic and effortless personal style. I mean, the method is so effective that it's been adapted, practiced, and refined by some of the best stylists in the world. Now, it's not everybody's cup of tea, and we still see professional stylists sticking with the fruit system, but in my opinion, when we apply the principles of this system, it proves to be superior to the idea that we should all strive for this hourglass silhouette, which is the objective of the fruit system. So today I'm going to be giving an overview of the individuals that contributed to the yin yang style archetypes and the nuances that make their systems stand out from the rest which will hopefully help you make an informed decision on which system is a best fit for you. Because although they all stem from the same yin yang principle, each one have their own unique approach. Okay, so let's start from the beginning with a woman by the name of Belle Northrup. Mama Belle, the one that laid the foundation for everybody. So back in 1936, Northrop contributed to the publishing of Art Education Today, which is described as an annual devoted to the problems of art education, which is sponsored by members of the fine arts staff of Teachers College, Columbia University. Now, this 10-page article is concise and, in my opinion, very forward-thinking for the time. On page one, we're met with the idea of clothes and the individual coming together as one. She says, quote, it is the purpose of this article to give a new approach to the problem of costume and wear, one in which a person's emotional as well as physical traits are sensed as a whole, and her costume appraised for its inner relation of beauty and expressiveness. All aspects of personality and every detail of appearance woven into an integrated whole must be taken into account. Now, I love this because she's not just speaking to the personal attributes of an individual. Instead, she's really trying to take into account the personality or essence traits as well. She's really considering how to achieve an overall expression of harmony. She then goes on to make the point that we need to not only be able to speak, but feel a universal language that can clearly be understood by anyone observing our inner and outer characteristics. So in pages two through eight, we're given a concise overview of the yin yang principle and how it can be identified in the natural world. She goes on to give quite a few descriptive and image examples. Then on page nine, we're met with the first look at how yin and yang can be identified in women. She lists the essence qualities, personality traits, and physical attributes as they pertain to the two extremes, yin and yang. So yin being short, graceful, delicate, small, rounded, youthful, and soft. And yang being tall, strong, direct, firm, sophisticated, and mature. Now she makes a very important note and states, the meanings given here to yin and yang represent the reaction of many individuals to these two world ideas. Yin yang for our purposes will always have positive interpretations. Yin will mean not negative 
weakness, fertility, subjection, but more positively, gentleness, mildness, delicacy. Yang will not mean negative, aggressiveness, crudeness, overbearing, mannishness, but strength, poise, dignity. So Mama Bell knows that we're all susceptible of viewing ourselves in a negative light and she just leaves no room for that. She's really looking out for us and making sure that we're viewing these attributes in a positive light, which of course I love. It gives us a head start in seeing the beauty in our unique qualities. Now on page 10 of the article, she really drives home the idea of seeing the individual for the total makeup of their yin yang traits rather than for one individual characteristic. She says, quote, with each woman, as in art and nature, there is an intermingling in some degree of yin and yang. The subtlety of her yin-yang personality patterns make each woman an individual fascinating study. Our intention is not to make girls and women into yin-yang types, but to see clearly their possibilities and limitations of personality appearance with a view of dressing them accordingly. To judge a person's yin-yang characteristics means that we observe the person as a whole and learn that each of her individual traits depends upon others and forms the sum of her personality. This method prevents us from jumping to conclusions. We will not then rate a person as a type because she has blonde hair or is tall and willowy partial and inadequate judgments, but we will from a picture of her in her completeness. No one part will be overemphasized, and a fairer, broader basis for dress selection will be established. Often by this more inclusive process, we find in a person attractive and hitherto unsuspected traits that we may suggest she point up through careful selection of her clothes. Treasures of temperament and personality are often hidden under icy reserve or painful shyness, just as unusual features features are sometimes overlooked at first glance. Through the yin-yang approach, we may get a better insight into a person's essential, interesting personality. And once we have learned to appraise, to see an individual, or ourselves, problems of dress become clarified because we know what we are aiming for in terms of expressing the individual's appearance. The selection or creating of costumes becomes more intriguing and more significant. That was so eloquently put. I feel like I could do an entire video on just those three paragraphs alone, but I really wanna just take a second to express my gratitude for Belle Northrup because she was so forward thinking for her time and she really paved the way, you guys. I mean, the way that she gracefully encouraged all of us to think of women as this kind of complete individual, this holistic approach to looking at ourselves is just amazing. I mean, she really presented the idea that we're not defined by one outstanding characteristic, so tall versus short or thin versus thin, but rather by the totality of our makeup. And that really allows us to explore unique attributes that we might otherwise resent and really shine a new perspective on them. Now, although this article was short, Northrop really set the blueprint for an evergreen approach to personal styling. Now, I don't think that she intended this to be interpreted as a complete system necessarily, but rather a new perspective to adapt and then to put into practical application. It aims to solve the problem of garments looking separate from the wearer, and it creates a solution that everybody can get on board with harmony and authentic expression. Now, lucky for us, there are some individuals that saw that they could build off of Northrop's original idea and just the overall yin-yang principle. So let's take a look at the next contributor. Okay, so our next contributor to the system is a woman by the name of Harriet Tilden McJimsey. And this is where a lot of meat and potatoes kind of comes in and a little bit of refinement as far as introducing some archetypes. So Harriet originally published the book, Art and Clothing Selection in 1963, and then republished it on April 30th, 1973. Now, I don't know the differences between each of the publications, but I'm gonna be speaking specifically to the 1973 publishing, and more specifically chapter four within that book. Now, in the beginning of the chapter, McJimsey points out the importance of understanding what complements you and why, and not only dressing for your figure because that's only one aspect of the total package. She says, quote, 
Many studies of clothing selection emphasize figure alone as a basis for becomingness in dress and overlook the other facets of personality. Dressing to type is in many ways more valid than dressing to figure alone. The figure is one variable of type, but it is only one part of the total picture of personality when apparel selections are made. She also addresses trying on different looks to determine your type. She says that this can be an effective method if you do it from a very objective viewpoint. On page 70, she states, there are others who have said that any woman can easily determine her type by the clothes she chooses to wear. Clothing can provide valid clues as to a woman's personality if her choices are sufficiently objective and not based on wishful thinking. The cute small girl who dreams of making herself striking and dramatic by her choice of dress will only succeed in submerging her true charm. The older matron, unwilling to accept the changes of maturity, tries to recapture youth by imitating the dress of a teenager only to discover that she has lost her own identity. A study of different types can help individuals to accept themselves as they are, recognizing that by being themselves, they have the best opportunity to be more attractive and individual since there are many equally acceptable ways to express personality in clothes. Although clothes do not determine personality, they do reinforce or modify personal characteristics, making it much more evident to the observer. Persons wearing identical, nondescript clothes, such as jeans and t-shirts, lose much of their identity as individuals. This study of personal expressiveness is based on the premise that individuality is desirable for most occasions and attainable as a personal and aesthetic goal. And wow, those two paragraphs sum it up beautifully. She really touches on the idea that we can all elevate our look if we're willing to look at ourselves objectively. She then goes on to describe the two opposites, yin and yang. And similarly to Northrop, she addresses the general attributes of yin and yang as found in nature and emphasizes the importance of understanding these principles. And it's worth noting that she encourages people to keep an eye out for how these show up in your environments and natural settings. And we can see this on page 75, where she says, quote, Actresses and other well-known personalities are frequently used to illustrate different types, but in each community, it is often possible and more interesting to choose locally known individuals or illustrations. The ability to recognize type in people and dress will grow if a student observes these characteristics wherever the opportunity presents itself. Much entertainment as well as experience can be gained by playing the game of types. Recognition of yang or yin characteristics in a person involves analyzing the individual's manner and personal appearance. Every individual should be considered as an animated design made up of physical as well as other personal qualities. The phrase personal expression is used to embody the sum total of a person's characteristics including many intangible qualities that produce individuality. After analyzing all these facets of personality, it is possible to classify and group them into several general types to serve as a basis for comparison. Now, I really like that she encourages all of us to sharpen up our eyes to these yin-yang attributes and play the game of types. I feel like this is how we can all get better at clearly identifying yin and yang, which can become very useful when we're trying to conduct objective analysis analysis of either ourselves or another individual. Now moving forward to pages 76 and 77, we're given two charts. One outlines the two extreme qualities in people which include attributes like height, build, coloring, facial features, mannerisms, voice tone, gestures, and appearance of age. Now keep in mind that this book was written in a different era, so specific attributes like complexion did not consider ethnic diversity. But I think we can all take the general principles and apply them to any modern woman. Now the other chart outlines the two extremes as they relate to clothing. We're instructed to consider the silhouette, lines, details, color, texture, balance, tailoring, and what she calls rhythm of garments. Now moving forward to pages 78 through 79 is where we're introduced to the archetypes for the first time. Now in McGemsey's system, there's six archetypes. She lists dramatic, athletic, classic, romantic, gamin, and ingenue, and she proceeds to outline the unique physical attributes of each. However, it's worth noting that later in the chapter, she refers to the athletic archetype as natural yang. 
It's also worth noting that McJimsey included age as a characteristic. Now, I don't think this is meant to be taken literally per se, but it seems to be based more off of the appearance of age. For example, at the time of this publishing, she classifies Barbara Streisand as dramatic and Audrey Hepburn as gamine, yet Audrey is 13 years Barbara's senior. So we can see that it's not technically based on age, more the appearance of age, and that's made more apparent as she uses the word appears in her description of age for each archetype on the description chart. Now on page 81, she offers a chart which gives a general outline of garments, garments constructions, details, and lines that would be most suitable for each of the archetypes. The effect of her suggestions is that the outfits will look native or in harmony with the archetype. So you're not fighting against the clothes, rather they complement you, which can offer an elevated kind of effect. And what you're really aiming to do here is mimic or accommodate your natural yin yang balance with that of the garments. So here are some of my own modern day visual examples of how McJimsey outlines the appearance, essence or mannerisms and general clothing recommendations for each of the archetypes. Dramatic. Appearance is tall, high fashion figure, extreme hairstyle, angular, striking features. Typical dress is extreme high fashion, long draped, clinging silhouette, severe angular or restrained curved lines, satin, heavy rich fabrics, black, chartreuse, gold colors, subtle or bold contrast of color, extreme hats, gloves, shoes. Natural. Appearance is strong, athletic build, casual and simple hairstyle, straight, heavy brows, square shoulders, square jawline, informal, casual manner. Typical dress is informal, casual, comfortable clothes, rough textures, and natural finishes as raw silk, tweeds, emphasis on belts, pockets, buttons for trim, earthy colors, and primary colors. Classic. Appearance is regular features, dignity combined with feminine charm, poised, gracious, and serene manner. Typical dress is tailored lines, simple, smart, refined, no extreme of fashion, small scale yang, tailored simplified yin. Romantic. Appearance is beautiful figure, large eyes, glossy hair, rich coloring or hair and eyes, beautiful features, sophisticated femininity. Typical dress is glamorous, extreme feminine fashions, fitted bodice, bouffant skirts, black lace or chiffon, garnet velvet. Gamin. Appearance is young girl with carefree windblown hair, freckles, turned up nose, friendly, casual manner, little boy look. Typical dress is pleated skirts, short jackets, Peter Pan collars, tiny checks and plaids, small scale athletic clothing. Ingenue. Appearance is pretty young girl with softly curly hair, slightly tilted nose, dimple rounded cheeks, and gently rounded figure, dainty and demure or gay and provocative. Typical dress is rounded silhouette, gathered fullness, boleros, rococo curves, dotted Swiss, soft angora, pastels or clear, sparkling tints. Now something to note about the chart on page 81 is that she puts each archetype into a subgroup or what can be thought of as a spectrum. So dramatic and natural are yang, classic and romantic are intermediate, and gamin and ingenue are yin. Now this is obviously different from David Kibbe's spectrum, who I'll be getting to a little later in this video, but if you read her descriptions, you can see her reasoning for this grouping. So let's take a quick look. Okay, yang. Dramatics are an extreme example of yang long, sophisticated, and powerful. Naturals are a softer version of young, strong yet casual and open. Intermediate, classics are even and blended, naturally charming, poised, and refined. Romantics are delicate and rounded, yet still womanly, which is why they fall in the intermediate classification rather than extreme yin. Yin, Gamines are smallish, very youthful, and can have that tomboy kind of feel. They're considered the yin version of the natural yang. Ingenue is dainty and almost childlike. 
McJimsey notes that it's hard to find anyone over the age of 16 who is a perfect ingenue, but a true ingenue will maintain their youthful appearance and characteristics even into adulthood and later age. Now keep in mind these are just my shortened descriptions and overall our individuality should still be honored. And McJimsey makes it really clear that we are to take these as suggestive. She says, quote, these outlines should be considered suggestive rather than complete. Words do not always convey the same meaning to everyone, so it is important for you to try to grasp the general impression rather than to give too literal an interpretation to each descriptive phrase used. As you check the chart, do not expect to find all the words in each box applicable. Check those that do apply. And later states on page 81, a number of different yet typical costume details are suggested. Whether one detail or another is appropriate will depend on the particular characteristics of each individual. In a composite type, the use of a becoming neckline, color, or flattering silhouette may be sufficient to adapt an extreme style to make it more becoming to an intermediate type. Remember that the styles described for each type indicate those frequently found to be most flattering. It does not imply that no other colors, textures, or lines will be becoming. In fact, everyone can wear some version of a classic style if it's individualized by becoming color, texture, silhouette, and scale, which is pretty much what I preach on this channel and what I try to convey in my aesthetic videos. So after outlining all six archetypes, she dedicates a few pages to what she calls composite types. This is where she addresses that we might be a combination of some of the archetypes, and if we are, that we should accommodate our unique yin-yang balance accordingly. Now overall, I think McJimsey's work was well thought out, and her clear explanation and directions can still be applied today with slight modifications to accommodate our modern culture. But overall, I think she did a fantastic job of expanding on the application of yin yang in personal style. It's a simple principle that can be objectively observed and applied with a little bit of practice in training your eye. Now, of course, there are some nuances about McJimsey's system that didn't make it into the video because I wanted to keep this more on exploring the history of the style archetypes. So I'm going to be doing a dedicated video in the near future about McJimsey work and on her book and if you want to read the book for yourself you can rent it for free i'll leave some links down in the description box so you can check it out for yourself next up on the timeline of stylists who contributed to the yin yang style archetypes is a gentleman by the name of john kitchener now the history of john kitchener is pretty interesting but first we need to back up and talk about a woman by the name of suzanne cagill now cagill pioneered the color analysis niche in the 1940s by creating the four seasons winter spring summer and autumn color palettes which took into account one's hair eyes and skin tones she eventually expanded on her four seasons and is often regarded as the mother of modern color analysis. Now, a woman that worked closely under or with Kegel was a woman by the name of Joan Songer, who became the founder of Personal Style Counselors, or PSC. And this is where we land on John Kitchener, who is now the director of PSC. According to the PSC website, John has been conducting style and color analysis since 1978 and has individually analyzed over 18,000 clients. Now, although he took inspiration from those that came before him, his style analysis system is completely unique as he assigns style essences, which seem to be more intuitive rather than assigned by a sturdy checklist. Now, this is just my personal opinion and interpretation of his system since he only offers paid style consults, so he doesn't have any books outlining his approach. So in his system, he does stick with the general idea of dramatic, natural, romantic, gamine, and ingenue archetypes for inspiration. He also added a style essence called angelic, which he describes as being the most yin and unique type. He says that they have an ethereal appearance, are often tall, thin, and waif-like, and likens them to mermaids and fairies. Now, what makes his system so unique is not only his intuitive approach to style essences, but also his meticulous detail to color analysis, given his pedigree training and extensive background. In the color analysis world, he's deemed as one of the best. 
He also believes that we're all a mixture of these style essences and offers a sliding scale analysis to his clients. According to his marketing material, he analyzes your bone structure and personal features to conclude what is called an essence style type. Now, if you want more information on John Kitchener and his services, I'm gonna go ahead and leave the links to his website and his YouTube channel in the description box down below. Now let's move on to one of the most recognized contributors, David Kibbe. Now back in the 80s, Kibbe had his own personal styling boutique where he specialized in offering women transformation makeovers. And in 1987, he published this book right here titled Metamorphosis, which offered insight into his method of creating your own image ID. Now the book is no longer being produced, but you can find excerpts from the book scattered around the internet. Now I think the most popular excerpts found online are his body type tests and his archetype descriptions. But unfortunately, there's quite a lot in the book that didn't make it online. Now, similar to McJimsey in Northrup, Kibbe really emphasizes the need for an objective way of looking at herself that still honors our individuality. He points out that an isolationist approach to style is insufficient to create a total harmonious look. He elaborates on isolationist styling and defines it as each element of your appearance is considered a separate entity unto itself unrelated to the rest of you. For example, how you might style your hair exclusively based on your face shape rather than your overall balance or composition, or how an isolationist stylist might put you in a garment because it's in season and trending. And he specifically poses the question in his book by saying, quote, do you see the need for continuity, a unified concept for your appearance? How crucial it is for all the elements to be related to one another in a holistic way? Also, please remember the important fact that the unifying concept we are speaking of is you, your unique essence, not some arbitrary fashion trend or abstract theory about evening out your features. Nothing should ever supersede the importance of you as the central concept for your appearance. This is the major hard and fast principle behind the metamorphosis. You come first, your essence, your identity. All the various elements of your appearance should be employed to work together in harmony to express your identity. Your image identity is your personal theme that can be translated into the various elements of your appearance. Therefore, before you start thinking about what hairstyle suits your face shape or what colors complement your complexion best, you need to discover your theme and then strive to express it clearly in all possible ways. Well, now that was pretty straightforward, wasn't it? But in my personal opinion, what he's proposing here is developing a well-curated personal brand that takes into account your inner essence and your outer physical attributes. They all work together in this kind of interconnected way, which is very similar to the original ideas of Northrup and McJimsey. But what Kibbe seemed to be able to do is elevate his system with the expansion of archetypes, which I'll get into that in just a moment, and his unique image ID approach. So right after this passage of the book, he starts to explain the idea of image ID. He goes on to explain that old Hollywood starlets were given what was called back then a total look and how they played into their yin yang balance so deeply that their looks became iconic. A few examples are Marilyn Monroe, Katherine Hepburn, and Claudette Colbert. So this is where the crux of the system is introduced. What, in my opinion, makes his system unique to him. It's discovering your star quality and tapping into your image identity. You're encouraged to think, what would be your image identity if you were playing the star role of your own life, which we all actually are if you think about it. Now in the following chapter, he offers a very similar breakdown and explanation of yin and yang as McJimsey and Northrup. There are some slight differences, but I'll address those when we explore his archetypes. So he then moves on to offer insight into integrating an expression of essence. He states, while understanding your body type and working with the clothing lines and silhouettes that complement it are very important in creating the most effective appearance possible, it can become a cold and bloodless approach to your beauty without an inclusion of the special essence you possess inside. You fail to make your appearance as vital and as alive as you are. Which again, I think solidifies the whole holistic approach that McJimsey and Northrup were also addressing. Now next is chapter three, which offers the quiz that many of us are probably familiar with today. Now back in chapter one, he warns the reader not to skip ahead to the quiz and then go straight to their archetype, but instead to really get a grasp of this inner journey that you're encouraged to take to 
find your essence and thoroughly express it. Okay, now let's take a look at his archetypes. Now, there's no doubt about it, he took a great deal of inspiration from McGimsey, but he opted to make a couple of changes. First off, he kept five out of the six archetypes. So he kept dramatic, natural, classic, gamine, and romantic, and discarded ingenue. And his interpretation of the spectrum of yin-yang deviates from McJimsey's. Kippy puts romantic as all the way yin, rather than intermediate, like McJimsey did. And gamine is mixed rather than yin. Now, if you remember, in McJimsey's publishing, she offered insight in what she called composite types. These are individuals that show characteristics from more than two of the pure types, but she never went on to necessarily form them into concrete subtypes. So this is where Kibbe elevated the archetype system with the addition of subtypes. So to the spectrum, he added soft dramatic, flamboyant natural, soft natural, dramatic classic, soft classic, flamboyant gamine, soft gamine, and theatrical romantic. And similarly to McJimsey, Kibbe outlined the characteristics of each of the archetypes, as well as the recommendations for garments, accessories, shoes, hair, and makeup. However, Kibbe offered what I would consider a more extensive look at each of the archetypes and their recommendations. He also included before and after image examples of each of these archetypes on real clients. So let's take a look at David Kibbe's archetypes. Now, Kibbe has typed many celebrities, so I thought it would be most accurate to include the images of these celebrities in their, what I would perceive, recommended um, garments and head-to-toe looks for each of the archetypes. Okay, now full disclosure, these are my super shortened versions of each of the archetypes, and I won't be speaking to the finer details of head-to-toe looks, like the essence aspect for instance, since that's something that really just has to be explored by the individual. These are just meant to give you a broad overview of his archetypes and general garment recommendations. Dramatic, extreme young, sharp, elongated, angular, strong features. Garments should accommodate your long vertical line and aim to maintain a sleek appearance. Soft dramatic. Yang with a pronounced yin undercurrent. Bone structure is large and angular, and flesh is soft and rounded. Garments should accommodate your long vertical line and soft romantic curve. Flamboyant natural. Soft yang with a dramatic undercurrent. Elongated and blunted bone structure. Garments should accommodate your elongated vertical line and width at the shoulders. Natural. Soft yang, athletic, width at shoulders. Garment tailoring should be constructed to accommodate your softly blunted edges. Soft natural. Soft yang with yin undercurrent. Garments should accommodate your softly blunted bone structure with softly unconstructed silhouettes, as well as with garments that will accommodate your refreshing soft curves. Dramatic classic. Balanced with yang influence, slightly angular bone structure. Garments should accommodate your balance and symmetry and your slightly dramatic angular edges. Classic. Balanced, evenly proportioned, and moderate. Garments should accommodate your beautiful symmetry, grace, and poise in the most simplistic way possible. Soft classic, balanced with a romantic undercurrent. Garments should accommodate your balance and symmetry and delicately curved edges. Flamboyant gamine, gamine with a dramatic undercurrent. Garments should accommodate your compact, yin, yet angular, yang, structure. Gamine, mixed, a combination of opposites of yin and yang. Garments should accommodate your straight, staccato-like structure with crisp tailoring. Soft gamine, gamine with a romantic undercurrent. Garments should accommodate your slightly angular compactness as well as your soft, delicate curves. Theatrical romantic, romantic with a dramatic undercurrent. Garments should accommodate your curves and spicy sharpness brought in by your dramatic undercurrent. Romantic, pure yin, delicate, soft, and rounded. Garments should accommodate your beautifully soft yet dominating curves. Now, in my opinion, both McJimsey and Kibbe's methodologies are effective enough to develop and refine a personal style each on their own. I think it really just comes down to what you're looking to get out of the experience of developing personal style and who you align your perspectives with more. Now, keep in mind that Kibbe has made slight modifications here and there to his methodology as the years have gone on. Since publishing Metamorphosis, he has removed the pure types that are in the middle of the spectrum. So pure, classic, natural, and gamine. But all of the subtypes and the two pure types on the end of the spectrums have remained. And he still provides transformation services today out of his New York City office and 
offers guidance on how to discover your own image ID with modern exercises that are posted in his private Facebook group. Okay, and now for a couple of honorable mentions. The first honorable mention is a woman by the name of Olga Brynlinski. I hope I said her name correctly. So Olga is a stylist out of Poland and she's developed an extensive system of what she calls ethereals. These 18 beauty archetypes are meant to serve as an extension to the original archetypes of McGimsey and Kibby's extended archetypes. Olga argues that the facial features need to be held to a higher regard than they are in other typology systems, and that one can have a body that matches a particular archetype, but an entirely different face, which in turn would clash. So within her system, she uses Kitchener's ingenue and angelic essences and offers two subtypes of each that give more insight into additional yin yang features that can be found within the face. So the first essence, angelic, has two subtypes and that is ethereal and noble. And the second essence, ingenue, has two subtypes youthful and innocent. Now, as a result of her findings, she's developed 18 different beauty archetypes, which I perceive more as curated aesthetics. Her website and Pinterest are abundant with beautiful images that exemplify the overall aesthetic of each of her archetypes. Now, the idea is that you are these archetypes. You don't necessarily pick them. I mean, you can. You can definitely use these as an inspiration for an aesthetic that you really like or that you want to implement into your wardrobe. But from what I understand, a variety of these archetypes will inherently just exist within you and as a result will look very native on you based on your overall yin yang makeup and unique facial characteristics. So she has a dedicated page on her website for each of the archetypes and gives a written description, plenty of images to reference, and even music and runway shows that exemplify the archetype, which I think is a really cool touch. And for easy reference, she made two charts. One is more image driven and the other states the archetype name, small description, and if it's yin, yang, or a combination of both. Now, what she suggests is that everyone will have a minimum of two ethereals, but you can have more ethereals. But as you tack on more ethereals to your list, the ethereals further down will become, for lack of a better word, more diluted. Now there's a lot to explore with this system, so I'm gonna be doing a video exclusively on Olga's 18 ethereals in the near future. Okay, and our last honorable mention here is Rachel Schemmel, and I hope again I'm saying her name correctly. Now Rachel is the blogger behind Truth is Beauty and is a self-taught color and personal style analyst. Now she developed her own personal style analysis system, which is pretty extensive. Now, just like those that came before her, she has the pure types. So dramatic, natural, gamine, romantic, classic, ingenue, and ethereal. But in addition to these pure types, she's created what she calls blends of two and three types, which is strikingly similar to what McJimsey originally recommended in her composites. But Rachel has taken the opportunity to modernize these types. And in my opinion, she really leans into style essences, which really gives her lots of room Room to expand on the style archetypes. Again, this is a system that can be further explored in another video, and I'll leave all of her information down in the description box as well. Whew. Okay, guys, we made it. Now, I know this is a longer video, but I really wanted to offer all this information in one video so that way you guys didn't have to go looking around for it in bits and pieces. And you know, I really strive to put out the content, create the content that I look to see. So this video was just really something that I felt was missing in the community, and I really just, I wanted to get it out there as soon as possible. So I worked really hard over the past week to put this all together. And um, yeah, I hope that you guys find it as beneficial as I did exploring the history and all the four corners, the far corners of the archetype systems. Now, I would love to hear your feedback. So which of these systems is your favorite? Which archetype do you most identify with? And where can you really see yin and yang within yourself or even just in your everyday day surroundings. I'm so curious. Um, so drop me a comment down below and let's chat it out. Okay. So that is it for today, guys. And remember, we all seek guidance and inspiration from somewhere. So if this can be a good resource for you to springboard yourself into another dimension of personal styling, I'm so happy for you. But that is it for today. A special shout out to everybody that reached out to me from my last two videos that I published. A lot of love and gratitude um, is definitely 
headed your way. I just cannot express how grateful I am for everyone that's coming over here and contributing to this channel. So that is it for this one, guys, and I will see you at the next video. Bye.